Could you take us back to that day? Well, General MacArthur came into the superintendent's office for an office call at 11 o'clock, and General Westmoreland introduced me to him. They went into the superintendent's office, had the office call, and then they came out, and General Westmoreland came over to my desk, and he said, Pat, are you going to be busy this afternoon? No. He says, would you come over to the mess hall and take General MacArthur's speech in shorthand? and transcribe it for me. I said, sure. So then I went over to the mess hall and women were not allowed to sit on the floor of the mess hall at that time. So I sat in the poop deck with Mrs. Westmoreland, Mrs. Groves, Mrs. MacArthur, and the other AOG wives that were there. Mm -hmm. And started taking the speech in shorthand. As I was leaving the hotel this morning, a doorman asked me, where are you bound for, General? And I replied, West Point. He remarked, beautiful place. Have you ever been there before? <laughs> <laughs> you can still read my notes. <laughs> I knew it was very, very important. The tears were streaming down my cheeks in some parts of it. I know the cadets were pretty silent. It was very well received, of course, but they really listened. They all recognized it was unique, and uh, they were proud that they were around West Point when it happened. Yes. That's MacArthur there, Westmoreland, Mrs. MacArthur, Mrs. Westmoreland, General Groves. Oh, he was just absolutely ecstatic about the whole Thayer Award ceremony, the speech, and then he spoke the next day, General Westmoreland, and wanted to use excerpts from General MacArthur's speech. And that's when I typed it up, and he said, you realize this is the only copy of the speech in existence, because General, West, General MacArthur didn't have any notes uh, not even a three by five card. And how does this rank in terms of your highlights at West Point? You obviously have it, a, it was, a long history. It was the highlight.